Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, Doctors Without Borders warn of a humanitarian crisis in the northeastern Nigerian town of Bama. It's been a year since it's been taken back from Boko Haram, but more than 1,200 people have died in an aid camp there. Many starved to death, say investigators. Also, we return to the Niger Delta and the wranglings over the workings and vandalization of oil facilities there. This time, we take a look at the effects that the theft of crude has on the precious mangroves of the state. And the Songhoi Blues are on tour. The group of Malian artists fled the north of their country in 2012 after a jihadist invasion four years later, and they're still on the road sharing their message of peace. But first, Médecins Sans Frontières is doing what it can to help with a humanitarian emergency it's uncovered in northeastern Nigeria. After its first trip to an aid camp in Bama in a year, the medical charities warned that hundreds of people there have starved to death, that many of the victims are children. Looking after the millions of people forced from their homes is just one of the many challenges caused by Boko Haram's seven-year insurgency. This is Bama last year when the Nigerian army chased Boko Haram fighters out of the town. Doctors Without Borders say that since then more than 1,200 people at a nearby aid camp have died from starvation and illness. Some of those who fled came to this camp in the state capital of Maiduguri. Here the conditions are not as dire but many say life is still very hard. <laughs> Food rations are so small. When our relatives want to help us, they're not allowed to come here. We aren't allowed to go to town to see them, and we aren't allowed to sell stuff to provide for our children. Before we could move in and out of the camp, we were getting money to buy oil and seasoning, but now we're told to stay in the camp. Boko Haram has lost ground to a military offensive but still carries out sporadic attacks. Across the northeast, almost two million people have been displaced by the insurgency. Most are in Maiduguri, but monitoring those in outside camps, like the one in Bama, can be difficult for aid agencies. Ongoing security risks mean army escorts are needed for visits, and months can pass between checkups on the vulnerable sites. Well, as the, world, new, the new World Drugs Report launched in Senegal on Thursday, the UN's Office on Drugs and Crime for West and Central Africa warned that the continent is increasingly being targeted by traffickers. Between 2009 and 2014, cocaine seizures on Cape Verde, Gambia, Nigeria and Ghana contributed to a 78% increase on those from the previous period. Analysts believe that's at least in part down to the saturation of European and North American markets. Drug dealers understand that if they want to expand their economy, they must spread to other countries, developing countries, where they can sell more drugs. West Africa and Africa in general are definitely a destination of choice for them, for socio-economic reasons. Look now at some news in brief. After the World Anti-Doping Agency's ruling that Kenya was non-compliant with its code, on Thursday, Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, signed an amended anti-doping bill into law. He's hoping that will do the trick. The government rushed to change legislation to avoid the expulsion of its runners from the Rio Olympics in August. Uganda plans on pulling its troops out of Somalia by the end of 2017. They deployed in 2007, the first of several contingents of the African Union's Amisom mission sent in to combat Al-Shabaab extremists in Somalia. Ugandan troops make up about a third of the 22,000 peacekeepers from the mission. Kampala hasn't given a reason for the planned pullout, but Uganda has been targeted by Al-Shabaab over the involvement of its soldiers in Somalia. Uganda may be scaling back regional intervention as the decision on Somalia comes two weeks after a withdrawal from Central African Republic was announced. 
Now, Ghana's opposition called for an inquiry into corruption claims levelled against President John Mahama. He's accused of accepting a luxury car from a Burkina Bay businessman who was awarded a construction contract. The government's denied any wrongdoing, saying that Mahama didn't personally have anything to do with the contract and that the vehicle was placed into the presidential carpool. The dispute comes at a bad time for the leader as the build-up to November's elections gets underway. Now, in the latest of our series on Nigeria's Niger Delta, look now at the environmental impact of oil theft. Known as bunkering, it can have devastating effects on the mangroves of the region, as can authorities' efforts to stop it. Our correspondent sent us this report from River State. Tracking down suspects who tap oil from pipelines laid beneath these mangrove swamps is logistically complicated. Please, talk to, the, to, talk to that man to borrow us the boat. The, canoe. the civil defence corps often have to rely on the goodwill of locals to reach places where oil is being tapped illegally, a process known as bunkering. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Perpetrators use the maze of rivers to transport stolen crude oil to illegal refineries in coastal communities in Nigeria and beyond. Today's search yields results for the head of the anti vandal unit and his team. A bunkering point has been uncovered. We got to get the information through informants. We make use of informants. Some of them are indigenous of this place. Some of them are one-time staff in this place. Some of them had problems with the owners, and they will come and whisper to us. The policy is to burn makeshift facilities to discourage the perpetrators from returning. But both bunkering and the scorched earth tactics of security agents has devastating consequences for the environment. Environmental activists are pressurising oil companies to repair pipelines, many of which were laid in the 1960s and 1970s. The oil companies should at least do something to renew the pipelines so that they can stay in business and the community people that, are, that, that is hosting them should also be happy and our environment will remain clean. These are difficult times for oil companies, both here in the Niger Delta and globally. So repairs to pipelines are even less likely to occur. And the rise in militancy in the region this year has made it too dangerous for maintenance staff to access damaged pipelines. Well, finally, the Songho Blues are on tour. The group of Malian artists fled the north of their country in 2002 after a jihadist invasion. Four years on, and they're still sharing their message of peace around the world. Our Aurore Dupuy went to meet, meet, went to meet them in Reunion. Wishing their dreams come true, hoping that peace returns to Mali, their homeland. These musicians come from the north of the country, Timbuktu, Dire and Gao. In 2012, the region fell to the hands of Islamist militants. Under Sharia law, all cultural activities were banned. In some neighbourhoods, we saw people get their hands chopped off. They were beaten with a hundred lashes. I knew that if I stayed in northern Mali, I'd lose my freedom. I wouldn't be able to play the guitar or play football. Thousands of Malians, including Aliou, Garba, Uma and Nathanael, fled towards the south and found refuge in the capital, Bamako. That's where the activists created their own band, the Songhoi Blues. Young Malians took to the streets to protest against the Islamist occupation. When we saw military convoys driving past, we told them to take back the north. From cabarets in Bamako to world tours, in four years, the Songhoi Blues have become well known in the US, in Hong Kong and here in Reunion Island. For many people, Africa is only about war and famine. But we're much more than that. We have our own culture. Security in Mali is enforced by African and UN forces, but pockets of resistance remain in the north. The Songhoi Blues hope that one day they'll be able to return home to be reunited with their families. Well, that's it for Eye on Africa. Thanks very much for joining us, and please do so again if you can. Take care. Thank mm -hmm. you.